So down on the main beach here at Marimbula, actually there's quite a series of beaches, but this one is beautiful and unspoiled. A little bit chilly this morning, although better than it was a couple of days ago, deep down south in Victoria, Australia. So we're making our way up the New South Wales coast, uh, around about four or five hours from Sydney at the moment, where we'll end up probably tomorrow night. I don't know, we're just making it up as we go. But uh, this is where we are, the foreshore at Marimbula. Let's have a bit of a look at the shore break behind us. So uh, not quite surfable this morning, but there will be some people, some enthusiasts that think they can probably get a quick ride out of that. But uh, over that way is probably New Zealand. So that's sort of where we are. The sun will be coming up over there. Hasn't quite appeared yet, although it is daylight. It's still quite overcast here this morning. Let's get stuck into today's news. So just a quick update on the flood situation down in Phuket. And we must first start by saying congratulations to the emergency services down there and all the volunteers that did an incredible job of cleaning up the place so quickly. I've got a few notes here in front of me. Now, there have been 6,080 people in Phuket directly affected and some 80 villages in Phuket, mostly the poorer villages, of course, nearby the, uh, the coast. They've been directly affected as well with severe floods and uh, caused a lot of problems for those people. Five roads and three bridges on the island of Phuket have also been directly affected and will cost quite a lot of money to fix. So uh, the emergency services got stuck into things very, very quickly and cleared the roads at least to get one lane of traffic through. And they've continued to do uh, some great work. They've identified where most of the damage is and I imagine they'll be getting stuck into that very quickly. So that's just a quick update on the flood situation in Phuket. Cleaning up, no one has been injured or died, even though they had those severe storms causing incredible amount of flooding around mostly the northern and central part of the island, less so down in places like Chalong and Rawai, but uh, the whole island was really deluged, quite unexpectedly, and right across the island, not just little localised flooding. So that's what caused the other uh, mass amount of flooding across the island when people woke up on Sunday morning. So now just off the foreshore, we're here at a sort of a, a dog park. A lot of people coming here this morning to share some exercise with their dogs. And of course, as I say that, there isn't a single dog in the park. But I wanted to mention the travails of Mr. Jordan Mc McIver. Now, Jordan is a 37-year-old Canadian. And, uh, well, he has made himself a little bit famous this week, his 15 minutes of fame, by rollerblading down Sakumvit Road. Now, rollerblades never really took off in Thailand to the extent they did in a lot of other countries. And there really aren't many places that people can enjoy rollerblades in the inner city. So Mr. McIver decided he'd rollerblade right down the middle of one of the most, one of the most busy traffic strips in the city. Came to the attention of people as they got their phones out and of course recorded him uploaded it and he's become a little bit of an immediate internet sensation. But his uh, trip down Sukhumvit Road did come to the attention of the authorities who felt they had to do something. Now, some people in social media were saying, oh, he's a nuisance, he was a worry to traffic, he was getting in the way of the motorcycles. Other people saying, well, he was just having a bit of fun and pat him on the back for uh, having a go. But uh, no, the police did in the end feel that they had to do at least something, and so they fined him 1,000 baht. So mm -hmm. Mr. Jordan McIntyre, the 37-year-old Canadian, probably got away with some cheap publicity. Now, there's been a night poll conducted over the last week asking people how they consider drug users, whether they think they're sick or whether they think they're bad. And here are the results, which I found slightly surprising. Now, the NIDA polls are well conducted and well researched and well regarded. 1,310 people were surveyed. I feel like I'm doing a family feud. 
As 64% of the people surveyed said that drug users are not sick, they're bad. Okay, so 50.2% say they should be penalised. And how many meth pills should they be carrying before they are penalised? Well, 30.8% said one pill. Another 16.1% said two to three pills, and then 7.3% said four to six pills. So I would say a fairly savage response from the Thai population surveyed in this NIDA poll of admittedly 1,310 people as to what they consider is a drug user and whether they consider them sick or whether they consider that they should be penalised for even a very low amount of for example, methamphetamine pills. In this case, 30.8% said people with just one methamphetamine pill should be penalised. This is the TNT program coming to you from Marimbula in southern New South Wales, a little sleepy coastal town, just uh, struggling to wake up this morning, wondering what the silly bald man is doing sitting on a bench talking to his phone. Uh, but we're now going to talk about a, a follow-up to the last story, this one from The Nation, where the Pur Thai Party, the largest of the opposition parties, is actually calling for the dissolution of the Bum Jai Thai Party. Bum Jai Thai Party is the one led by Anatan Shavirakun, who's a deputy prime minister and also the current public health minister. Doesn't mind the old headline. Well, uh, he, of course changed the, uh, the status of cannabis and hemp back on June the 6th. Uh, he decriminalised them from being part of the, the listing in the Category 5 drugs, and by doing so basically decriminalising those particular drugs, which has led to a whole lot of assumptions about what that means. And there's been no actual legislation covering what that does mean, and people now are investing lots of money on planting crops and opening up shops all around the, uh, the streets of Thailand selling cannabis, assumedly legally, but probably in theory not. But there's more to come on that. In the meantime, though, Per Thai calling for the dissolution of the Bum Jai Thai Party, saying that their cannabis policy was both unlawful and causing problems, quoting their words. And they say the whole policy by Anatan Shavadukun to decriminalise cannabis was just simply to win votes. And they feel so strongly about it, they're putting a formal proposal to the Election Commission on November the 1st. Now, who knows what is going to happen then, but uh, the quite conservative Election Commission being asked to rule on a, a situation that has become utterly political and less about uh, liberalisation of drug policies is going to be a difficult decision for them. Of course, back on June the 6th, cannabis and hemp were removed from the list of Category 5 drugs, essentially decriminalising the drug at that time. So it's going to be quite interesting to see uh, what happens when that petition that says cannabis is having an adverse effect on society. And that's coming from the progressive Per Thai Party, who are the leading opposition party. So that whole situation has become completely politicised and there's still no sight of the Cannabis Act rising to the top of the pile for things to be discussed in Parliament and the current Parliament will run until probably March the 23rd unless something untoward happens between now and then and then probably that Act will have to wait until a new Parliament is sitting and uh, who knows what's going to happen with that nobody, especially me, and probably you as well. So we haven't heard much about COVID-19 for a while. It's certainly still about, and there's still thousands of cases being reported each day, although the status of COVID-19 in Thailand now is uh, not very concerning. Uh, people who are over 60, though, and have had other diseases, perhaps should make sure that they do their best to take appropriate precautions and get vaccinated or get top-ups on their vaccination if they so choose. But uh, today there is news of two new cases of another Omicron variant. Interestingly, this variant, it's called the XBB strain of Omicron, 
is the most predominant strain of COVID-19 in Singapore at the moment. But in Thailand, as we speak, only two cases of this new variant, which apparently is very infectious, have been uh, detected. Not anything to concern ourselves about, but something just to be aware of, to keep on top of the news. And in regards to monkeypox, there has been an 11th case now identified in Thailand. And again, nothing really to concern ourselves about, except just to be aware that it is around. And that uh, person was identified in Bangkok and had returned from Qatar. Thailand's 11th case of monkeypox here endeth our lesson about uh, the health situation in Thailand. So we finished today somewhat where we started here at the Cranky Cafe in Marimbula on the southern coast of New South Wales in Australia. And it's uh, an opinion piece in Thai PBS World. And the headline says, Thailand's abstention in the UN vote on Russia's annexation and referenda is a pointless exercise to please Moscow. So it's an opinion piece from Thai PBS World. And if you're interested in matters like uh, Thailand's voting in the UN and its status in the rest of the world, this article may be of interest to you. But from us here in Marimbula, from TNT on tour, we really appreciate you uh, joining in today's program. Hopefully we've shown you just a very small little bit of Marimbula. It's sort of a coastal town that meanders up the hill and with some beautiful views of the sweeping coastline down here. Not particularly warm as you can see by what I'm wearing and as uh, you can see with the people what they're wearing there in the background, everybody's pretty well rugged up here at the Cranky Cafe. Hope you have a fantastic day. We'll do our best to bring you another program. It's becoming increasingly complex as we get to some of these more remote spots. We'll see you tomorrow.